Humanity's greatest achievement might be the ability to create and harness electricity. It's all around us and we always want more. But did you know that close to 20% of Canada's electricity comes from nuclear power plants? Imposing and massive structures balanced on the shores of Canada's Great Lakes. A symbol of scientific progress and insatiable consumption. So what goes on inside these monstrous powerhouses? After 9-11, all public tours were canceled, but we are taking you inside. First up, the Darlington Nuclear Power Generating Station just outside Toronto. It is the big kahuna of nuclear reactors, and it's a small footprint considering the amount of power it produces. It really is a, a miracle of modern science. And when we control that energy to the purpose for safe generation of electricity, it's, it's just simply a marvelous, uh, marvelous uh, way we do things here. How is nuclear energy made? Uranium, a natural radioactive mineral, is mined and turned into small fuel pellets. Those pellets go into a fuel bundle, Fuel bundles are put into a honeycomb-shaped device called the calandria or reactor. After a nuclear reaction is initiated, the resulting heat is combined with water to produce steam, which spins a turbine, generating the nuclear power. Eight fuel pellets can power one Canadian home for a year. And unlike coal or oil, with nuclear energy, no greenhouse gases are emitted. Getting inside a plant isn't easy. Safety and security are tight and everything is closely monitored. Everyone that enters and exits is scanned for radioactive particles. Nobody wants to track contaminated materials into their home. Clean. Stepping inside, it's easy to see why this is called the Big Kahuna. These are massive places with vast hallways. Everything is humongous and shiny and there is a constant buzzing in the air. Down there is the reactor bay of Unit 3. It's one of four on site. And buried under there, surrounded by concrete, is the nuclear reactor. That's where the fuel rods go and where atoms smash apart to make energy. This gigantic room is the turbine hall. It's the size of six football fields. Every ounce of power courses through here. It's pretty impressive and a little intimidating. These generators create almost as much power as Niagara Falls. After atoms are smashed in the reactor bay, steam is sent through these generators. There's a lot of heat and energy rushing by just a few feet away. That steam is then sent to that green turbine that houses a massive spindle the size of an SUV. The steam then powers the spindle to rotate 1,800 times a minute, generating all the electricity. You can actually feel the vibrations just standing here. These generators operate 24 hours a day, sending out a steady stream of power to the transformers. It's called a clean energy, but it's not perfect. Nuclear reactions create potentially unstable conditions and radiation, but people inside the plant say it's still safe. It's fundamentally the, the safest way to produce electricity. It really is. You will get more radiation on an airline flight from Toronto to Vancouver uh, in one flight than you'd ever get uh, sitting at the uh, boundary of, uh, of Darlington over a period of a year. Then there's the waste. Used fuel rods are some of the most hazardous radioactive materials out there. In this pool, there are over 300,000 spent fuel rods. They sit submerged in there for over a decade just to cool off. They say it's safe to walk close to the pool, but we don't get that close. The turquoise color of the water is from electromagnetic radiation. The water is actually clear. Eventually, it's specially sealed and stored over there. High-level waste has been kept in that building for decades. There is very little room for error, and all the reactors are managed here, in the control room, the brain of the plant and it looks a little like how I imagine the old control rooms at NASA. 
control room is, uh, it's, 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 you know, we have uh, computers that control the reactor unit. It's not like we're manually operating it. It's all computer controlled. The room is lined with flashing lights and knobs, and it's not even connected to the internet. But even though these computers look like old Commodore 64s, Ron says they're still up to date. Darlington was designed back in the uh, 80s. Uh, started built it, and as well in the late 80s, we started uh, constructing Darlington. So essentially, that's why the equipment we have in the plant is, uh, is from that era, but certainly we maintain it. If something were to go wrong, the plant can shut down in mere seconds, and each is outfitted with emergency equipment. Massive trucks, generators, and supplies securely fastened to the ground. Darlington has been producing electricity for almost 30 years with no major incidents. But for all the risks and rewards, these plants aren't in the middle of nowhere. They exist within the community. Just over that hill is the last remaining family farm in the area.